The long-awaited debut of the X-Men and their associated cast of characters and paraphernalia is quickly getting closer and closer to the MCU. Mutants as a concept are now fully integrated into the universe, with more and more mutants being revealed with each coming year and with each project, and it's only a matter of time before the X-Men as a team finally takes shape. While we currently don't have any indication as to the whereabouts of the most famous veteran X-Men members, we do have a leak which claims the Adamantium and the Island of Genosha, both of which are closely related to the mutants in the original source material, may already exist. So, stick with us today, watchers of the Marvel Multiverse, and let's discuss a little bit about the nation of Genosha and dive into the theory at hand. The Republic of Genosha is widely regarded as a mutant safe haven, often found under the control of Magneto and his Brotherhood of Mutants. Initially, the island nation enslaved and tormented natural-born mutants who were turned over to the government and treated as property. After their rulers had ceded control to Magneto, however, he reformed the island into a mutant paradise. And now, this sanctuary allows mutants to evade persecution from the outside world and has allowed dozens of mutants to escape harm. Magneto runs the nation as a mutant-only country and will provide refuge to mutants from across the planet. With this, it has recently been claimed by reputable informant known as Daniel RPK that the island of Genosha is going to undergo some drastic changes from its original sourcebook iteration, and it was only just recently brought into being. According to this theory, it is none other than the Eternals who created this island during the events of their solo film. As of now, the body of Tiamut the Celestial is still embedded in the crust of the Earth, with only his head and one hand having emerged from the ocean, following Cersei, able to render him immobile. It even goes as far as to suggest that Cersei's transmutation effect molded the Celestial's body into the MCU's iteration of Adamantium. As it stands, it is now widely believed that this will be a particular point of contention throughout both Captain America New World Order, as well as the Thunderbolts film, as the nations of the world scramble to lay claim to Tiamat's body. In Wakanda Forever, we learn that Queen Ramonda was adamantly against sharing vibranium with the world, and while we do not yet know what M'Baku will do with his reign, it makes perfect sense that the world would look for an alternate to vibranium. It's even possible that adamantium might be regarded as more valuable depending on its versatility and properties. If this turns out to be true, then it would explain why adamantium has not been utilized or even mentioned before, as it's quite literally a brand new compound. It would also give us information as to the creation of the Weapon X program and the the evolution of Wolverine as a fan favorite character. While Logan is several hundred years old and his healing factor drastically slows his aging, the inclusion of adamantium coating over his bones took place fairly late in his life and was not a part of his initial mutation. Instead, he was born with bone claws and underwent treatment at the behest of the United States government. But if this is to be believed, then Wolverine would not have undergone this Weapon X program as of yet in the MCU. In the She-Hulk series, however, eagle-eyed fans were able to spot a newspaper clipping which detailed a bar fight between several assailants and one unidentified individual who apparently had metal claws, who many fans understandably presumed to be Logan. According to the official MCU timeline, the modern day events of the Eternals took place at the end of the year 2023, while She-Hulk has been said to take place largely in mid-2025. This would mean that the government has already been mining adamantium deposits and Wolverine could have undergone this Weapon X treatment within just the last year or so. If Tiamat, and therefore untapped adamantium reserves are open for claim, then it stands to reason that any number of nations might seek to claim and mine these resources. And if this timeline is to be believed, then the US government has already been working on it for quite some time now. It would also make in-universe sense for Magneto to lay claim to a nation which is quite literally made of metal, though exactly what Magneto's relationship to this storyline will be remains to be seen. As of right now, it is widely believed that the Thunderbolt's mission will be to obtain adamantium from Genosha and return the precious resource into the arms of the United States government. This might explain how John Walker could obtain his third shield, seeing as Wakanda is currently unwilling to trade large vibranium deposits to the outside world. And while John Walker's comic shield wasn't made of adamantium, it could be an interesting detail to include in the MCU. It also offers us insight into what might transpire throughout the course of Captain America 4, as President Thaddeus Ross has been named of one of the primary opposing forces, as well as a major player in the Thunderbolts project where he apparently will become Red Hulk. His character could be used to explore this international conflict, as several countries fight amongst one another for the right to mine adamantium, and he might even come across a private force which seeks to claim independence for Genosha. While the government of the United States is set to be a major player, this revelation would have effects across the world, including on one of the most powerful foreign nations known to Marvel. We are of course talking about the impact 
that this may have on Wakanda and the future of the Black Panther franchise. Recently, we saw how Wakanda fared against a nation with similar access to vibranium, and the forces of Talokan were largely able to level Wakanda's capital city. It was evident that Wakanda's primary advantage is their rich vibranium deposits, but without this edge, they are far weaker and more susceptible to invasion. In the comics, adamantium was initially designed as a synthetic vibranium, and if the world now has access to a viable substitute, then Wakanda's position as the most powerful nation in the world may be under attack, and some new forces may be able to contend with Wakanda's army by using adamantium. Regardless of how this works out, however, we know that the introduction of adamantium is right around the corner, even if this theory is disproven. And when adamantium eventually makes its debut, it will send worldwide ripples across the Marvel Universe. But anyway, my friends, what do you think of this theory? Do you think adamantium will make its debut in the Thunderbolts? And how do you think it will tie into both the Thunderbolts and Captain America 4? In addition to this, a smaller report has indicated that the leader will not in fact be the villain of New World Order in the fourth Captain America film. But instead, we'll be working directly with General Thunderbolt Ross, who may have actually undergone the transformation of Red Hulk already. What's clear though, is that Captain America 4 and Thunderbolts will be extremely closely related with similar conflicts. But now my friends, how do you think the rest of the world will react to adamantium? And do you think that Wolverine Logan has already undergone the adamantium Weapon X procedure? And do you think that he did actually subtly appear or have a nod to him in She-Hulk? And do you think he underwent this procedure? just following the events of the Eternals. Again, as always, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button to assemble and join our team, and I hope that you have a great day.